Hi everybody, it's Scott here and this is the second video on joining methods. In this video we're going to briefly cover brazing, soldering, the use of adhesives and also plastically deformed joints. These are all methods that can be used to join things together. The first one we're going to look at is brazing. So a little bit like welding, brazing relies on heat being supplied, usually from a small flame like an oxyacetylene torch, but it could also be uh, generated via putting the parts into a furnace. So the parts are quite hot, but they're not quite at their melting uh, point yet, so they're still solid. And to braze them, we then add a third material which we melt, and we use that to glue the joint together. So it's basically a form of metal glue. Common brazing materials that we use are generally copper based and they're used to braze together um, parts that are copper or aluminium and even steel. Now because the brazing materials are usually weaker than welding, we need to design the parts so that we're brazing over a bigger area. In this example here we've got a cutting, a series of cutting tools which we might use in a lathe. And so this, these pieces here would be made out of steel, but we want to put a, a tungsten carbide tip on them, which are quite strong and highly wear resistant. So we can't weld these two metals together. So what we might do is use brazing to braze this tip onto this big steel um, arm. Because brazing uses less heat than welding, then the material properties in the parts that we're brazing together are not as badly affected as they might be in the welding process, and it also allows us to braze together things that we can't otherwise weld together. And for example, this operation here where we're making these cutting tools, we can um, also automate that process by using thin wafers of the bra brazing material which we might place between in this example the tungsten carbide and the steel. Um, we set a whole lot of these up, we put them on a conveyor belt that runs them through a furnace and we can produce these um, quite quickly and economically in large, large volumes. The next example we're going to be looking at is soldering which should be familiar um, to most people including those who've worked with electronics. So soldering again is similar to brazing um, but it uses even lower temperatures and due to the nature of the materials that we're using it results in weaker joint strengths. Because of this the component material properties are even less likely to be affected because we're not melting that parent material and recrystallizing it. Solders are made from mixtures of tin or lead, less used in modern industry due to the health concerns with both tin and lead. Alloys of silver are now used to produce stronger joints. As with the brazing process, uh, when we're soldering it's common to use a flux, a certain special fluid that we apply to the surface to help it obtain good adhesion and also stop some impurities from the atmosphere getting into our soldered joint. Um, strangely enough, Coca-Cola is a good uh, flux to use for soldering and this process is mainly used for making electrical components or joining copper and brass parts in plumbing and in the old days it used to be used for making airtight tin plated cans. So here's a picture of uh, a soldering iron on an electrical circuit and this is what plumbers commonly do, uh, soldering different sized pipes together and here is quite an old image showing a traditional soldering iron which is um, a big lump of metal that you would put in a fire or in a furnace to get very hot and then um, apply to the can to heat it up and then melt the solder onto that joint. Adhesives are yet another method of bonding things together using a liquid. We can categorize adhesives based on those that are heat based in that we apply heat or we generate heat through a chemical reaction and we use that heat to melt a glue which then um, cools down, solidifies and we've got a glued joint. So this guy in the picture there is using a hot glue gun which everyone should be familiar with. Another type of adhesive is a two-part adhesive, so when we mix these two different components of the glue together, we get a chemical reaction um, that changes the property of the, the adhesive and it hardens and sets. Araldite is a good example of a two-part adhesive. We also have air hardening adhesives, so these adhesives such as PVA uh, work by evaporating either a water base or a hydrocarbon base out of the glue, leaving the solids which then stick our components together. Another type of um, adhesive is an anaerobic adhesive and these harden in the absence of air. So a typical 
um, ones include superglue. These use cyanoacrylates and then when um, you put the glue between two surfaces and remove all the air by pressing them together, that's when they start to harden, as we'll all know from accidentally supergluing our fingers together from time to time. Something that we should always think about when we're designing adhesive joints is that we want to design uh, the load path so that the adhesive joint is loaded in shear. And so for this joint here, we'd want to load that with a force going up and a force going down so that this adhesive joint in the gap here is loaded up in shear. The worst thing possible we can do when we're um, designing or manufacturing adhesive joints is to have them um, exposed to loads which will cause them to peel apart from each other. Increasingly, adhesives are becoming a very important method in making permanent engineering joints. So in this photograph here on the right, we have uh, a fighter jet wing. And this technician is looking at the repair of this wing, which has been made with a composite fibre, like a carbon fibre patch panel. So if someone shoots a hole in the side of your aeroplane, um, when you come back to base and they tear it down, they can now repair that type of damage by gluing on a composite patch such as the one that you see here. The final joining method that we're going to look at in this video is plastically deformed joints. The typical plastically deformed uh, technique that we use is riveting. So aluminium aircraft are almost exclusively made by riveting um, the different pieces of aluminium together. A stereotypical rivet might look like this, where we have a cylindrical portion and then a preformed head, and you push this through uh, the holes that are made into the two parts that you want to join, and then you hammer or deform this end of it. Sometimes we heat these up to make them easier to deform so that the rivet can't slip out of that um, hole anymore. There are lots of different types of rivets, as you can see from these examples shown. In the middle here, we have a typical pop rivet, and you have a pop rivet gun that holds this and then pulls this piece of steel through this uh, softer portion of the rivet, deforming the rivet up until a certain point where the force increases, and then um, this steel breaks, and then it falls out of the rivet. We have some double-ended rivets here, so you slide the rivet on from either end and then it's deformed and held in place. We also have a split-legged rivet down here, so you push that through and then fold the legs outwards um, to stop that rivet coming out of the hole. So a wide variety of um, different options to choose from. Staking is another method of plastically deforming parts so they stay together. So in this example, we'd use something like a, a hand punch or a mechanical press to spread part of uh, the solid part of one of our components so that it can't um, be removed from the part that we've inserted it into. So this is kind of like designing the rivet into our part, and then we deform our part so that it can't be separated. Forming is a general term that we use um, for things like this, where we might put little extensions onto our part, and then we fold these over to hold them in place later on. So old uh, tin toys used to be made this way. You would stamp a variety of steel or aluminium pieces, interlock them together and then fold these tabs so that they hold together. And this is still commonly used for lightweight um, metal assemblies uh, even today. Seaming is yet another method of plastically deforming um, our materials to obtain joints. And the example shown in this picture on the right here is the rim of an aluminium can that has been folded together to create this uh, seam here. So what we've created here is a continuous joint made from multiple folded sheets. That brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching.